Hi, this is Asher Intrader, and you're about to see and hear a message that we recorded live at a conference here in Jerusalem this year. The title of the message is called The King of Glory, or Who is This King of Glory? Taken from Psalm 24. Let's just uh, read that to begin with. Who is the King of Glory? Adonai Izuz v'gibor, the Lord mighty and powerful. Adonai Gibor milchama, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, ye gates, and you everlasting doors. And the King of Glory will come. Who is this King of Glory? Adonai Tzvaot, the Lord of Armies. He is the King of Glory. We see here that there is a King of Glory who is supposed to come to come in, to enter, and we know where that is, is coming into uh, Jerusalem. So there's really a question here, David asks, who is this King of Glory? When and how is he going to come into Jerusalem? Now we know from the New Covenant that that King of Glory is Yeshua, Jesus, and he's going to come, and the place he's going to come is into Jerusalem. Actually, he did that partially fulfilled. We see it in John chapter 12, that Yeshua entered into Jerusalem in triumph, or at least partial triumph. Thousands, tens of thousands of people received him. They waved palm branches and they said, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna, Hoshana, the King of Israel. They welcomed him in. And those people back then, they began to get just a little bit of the understanding that this was the king, this was the king of glory, this is the Messiah, and he's coming in to Jerusalem. And they said, he is the king of Israel. Now, they were expecting the kingdom uh, to be established on earth immediately, but there was a little surprise for them. Yeshua had to be crucified to give us forgiveness of sins. He had to be raised from the dead to give us eternal life. He had to be uh, lifted into heaven and pour out the Holy Spirit so we could be filled with the Spirit of God. Jerusalem had to be destroyed so that the gospel would be sent all over the world. And the international ecclesia, the international church, had to be established. It's interesting then that later Paul the Apostle said in Ephesians 1 that Yeshua is the head of the church, head of that international group of people that had received him as Lord. I just want you to think about those two sayings for a moment. John chapter 12, Yeshua is described as the king of Israel, and Ephesians 1, he is described as the head of the church. Yeshua is just one person, he's not two different people, but he has these two different roles. He is both the king of Israel and the head of the church. It's interesting that in both of those situations, he is defined according to a group of people. He is defined in his role toward Israel, and he's defined in his role toward the church. In other words, he has two roles, one role toward Israel and one role toward the church. He is the king of Israel, and he is the head of the church. Now, all this involves a profound mystery that God created mankind to then later dwell in us. And Yeshua is both God and man. He came to this earth. He was born here. God manifested in the flesh. And and, the whole mystery of the gospel is so amazing. And it all comes out uh, in this story. And we see here that Yeshua as the King of glory, as both the King of Israel and the head of the church. And these two group of people have to come together to understand the mystery of who he is. So we start picking up in the video from this point of understanding John 12, Yeshua as the King of Israel, and Ephesians 1 as the head of the church.